Hey guys, it's DC here and welcome to the basics of cybersecurity part one exploring IT. Okay, so this part is all about exploring the current state of IT industry enabling you to build an appreciation for the various IT employment opportunities. Case studies will explore current trends in technology from an emergent and disrupted perspective, and you will then start to develop your own professional identity and explore the requirements needed to gain employment within the field through these case studies and relevant industry employment information. You are also going to explore and acquire skills in web design and development in order to gain an understanding of the important role that the web plays in the delivery and storage of information within the IT industry. Okay, so let's start with the current state of IT. Now, the biggest challenge to IT in the future is security, which is probably why you're all here. Security could negatively impact connectivity to public networks, and if these problems cannot be successfully addressed, I envision a time of closed private network and less information sharing. The risks now are so great and getting worse every day that we even see foreign governments toppling superpowers the way Russia toppled the US and its puppet in charge because of weak controls and poor security. The biggest problem isn't the machines, it's the people involved at every level, inside and out. I've worked in computer security for quite a few years now and I can see it's almost hopeless. In many cases, IT doesn't even uh, rescind authentication privileges of employees fired for as long as six months, which means basically that their uh, credentials are stored and active for at least a six month period after they've been fired or, or let go. The biggest threats are not from the outside, they are actually inside threats both innocent and sometimes malicious. Even well-meaning people in the government, for example, leave their laptops with classified information on buses or public transport by accident. It happens all the time. People who are just general staff who are working find computer security just too inconvenient a lot of the time and often just try and find ways of getting around it. Malicious people also shoulder surf or use social engineering practices to gain control of different systems or potentially uh, break into a certain system. And this doesn't even take into account the plethora of tools that are being used by malicious individuals uh, and governments to defeat security. They also use these tools to steal money, information, which basically is money, and sometimes to set themselves up to be able to blackmail an individual to gain access or money. AI is something that will not solve this problem because the biggest issue here isn't actually the machines. The weakness, in most cases, is actually the people. And unless we can find some way to eliminate that problem, then the future of IT, at least in a, like a public domain, is going to change to a more uh, locked up state. The global information technology industry is on pace to reach a 5.2 trillion, not billion, trillion in uh, 2020. According to the research consultancy IDC, the enormity of the industry is a function of many of the trends discussed in this episode. Economies, jobs, and personal lives are becoming more digital, more connected, and more automated. Waves of innovation build over time, powering the technology growth that appears to be on the cusp of a another major step forward. At the moment, the United States is the largest tech market in the world. The US represents roughly 32% of the total or approximately 1.7 trillion for 2020. And in the US, as well as many other countries, the tech sector accounts for a significant portion of economic activity. Despite the size of the US market, the majority of technology spending is roughly 68% and occurs mostly beyond the borders of the US. Spending is often correlated with factors like population, GDP, and the, I guess, market maturity. Among the global regions, Western Europe remains a significant contributor, accounting for roughly one in every five technology dollars spent worldwide, which is pretty substantial. However, as far as individual countries go, China has also 
clearly established itself as a major player in this global tech market. China has followed a pattern that can also be seen in developing regions, where there is a twofold effect in the closing gap in categories such as IT infrastructure, software, and services along with staking out leadership positions in emerging areas such as robotics. So let's go take a look at some employment opportunities that are available out there. Okay, so I'm having a look at indeed.com here, the Australian version. And as we can see, there's a lot of jobs here in cybersecurity. So as we can see, first one here, 98 to 110,000 as a specialist. Uh, there's a couple of jobs here as uh, analyst in cybersecurity for the Queensland government, which is a, a state government here in Australia. Um, there's some here for Boeing, the uh, airline company. And uh, there's some very entry level ones here that are around 50 to $80,000. So those jobs are all in Australia, all around where I live, but it's pretty much comparable depending on if you're in Australia, the US, or even in the UK. The, um, the difference is it's just pounds, dollars, and Australian dollars, right? But the monetary value, or the income rather, is actually pretty much the exact same number. So a lot of cyber jobs in the US at the moment are going for roughly $50,000 as an entry level position, working their way up to around 80, 90,000 for entry level positions. The same in the UK, it's about 50,000 pounds for an entry level position and in Australia, 50,000 Australian dollars. There is plenty of work out there for uh, IT professionals wanting to get into cybersecurity, especially if you have current experience in the industry. So for example, if you are an IT systems administrator or a network engineer and you want to get into cybersecurity as either an analyst or maybe a, like a SOC team member, uh, they're going to look at that experience and they're going to rely on that as you go into that job. And they'll really prefer it if you do have that experience. So these days, jumping into cybersecurity uh, straight out of university or, or college uh, or have just having done certifications is getting a little bit trickier for those of you who are thinking of taking that route. It's not impossible, it's just a little bit harder because there are a lot of people in other areas of IT, like I said, system admins and network engineers who want to get into cybersecurity so that they can progress a little bit uh, faster or better in their own career. And maybe it's just a, a subject of interest that they uh, now like, or maybe they're looking that after a couple of years as working as a SOC analyst or something similar to that, they can then earn maybe like 150 to 200,000 dollars. For me, that's exactly how I got into the industry. I was originally a systems administrator, then I went to network engineering, then senior systems admin and network security. And then I took a jump to get into cybersecurity. And when I went for those initial interviews, the first interviews I ever went for, they basically said, what sort of experience have you got? And I said, I don't have any cyber experience. I'm pretty new to this whole cybersecurity thing, but I do have this industry experience as a, a sysadmin, a senior sysadmin, a network engineer, network security engineer, etc. And they said, okay, well, you know, it's at least you know the basics of these systems, now you just need to learn how to protect them better or to attack them better, depending on what the job was that I was going for. The trends to watch in 2020 are, number one, tech washing fades in favor of real strategy. So thanks to the vast influx of user-friendly technologies, it has become popular to say that every company is a tech company, but the ubiquity of technology does not necessarily change the underlying business model. While digital transformation is creating new avenues for growth, companies are finding that they cannot simply slap tech labels on their products and practices and automatically reap those benefits. On one end of the spectrum, this takes a shape of larger companies going public and struggling with the realities of their industry. There are well-established economics and regulations in industries such as transportation or real estate. Software and mobile devices may connect consumers directly or change a distribution model, but it is more difficult to alter profit margins or navigate complex interconnections, especially at scale. On the other end of the spectrum, there are smaller businesses who can easily fall prey to marketing hyperbole. 
As with previous trends like unified communications or gamification, new trends like artificial intelligence and blockchain hold a great deal of promise but require significant investment or change to workflow. Smaller companies are finding that purchasing new technology is not the same as truly integrating that technology for improved results. Just as the opportunistic use of labels has often applied to individual trends, the same behavior has been happening with technology in general. Rather than attempting to use technology as a crutch, businesses will become much more intentional about strategically integrating technology into their culture and roadmap. Another common use for this is in startups, where you see a lot of different startups are saying that they're a tech startup, but actually they're not. They're maybe like a startup in hospitality that is actually using tech as part of their solution. They're not really a tech startup. Their idea actually revolves around hospitality. It's just that they, they have to use tech to you know, get the job done. Number two on the list is workforce diversity grows in many ways. So the workforce diversity most often refers to having an employee population that reflects the general population with no preferential treatment or restrictive measure given on the basis of gender, race, age or other factors. The technology workforce in particular has been under the microscope for its lack of diversity thanks to unconscious bias and optimization along with other behavior that is far more conscious such as barriers to access for low-income students or even reports of outright abuse. In 2020, the call for improved diversity will continue to pay dividends even if fully diverse and inclusive environments still lie farther in the future. Going beyond efforts around common conceptions of diversity, there will also be a marked increase in the skill diversity that companies are seeking. 20 years ago, the stereotypical IT worker had a heavy concentration in infrastructure skills and worked in relative isolation from the rest of the business. Today, companies are seeking expertise across all four areas of CompTIA's IT framework, infrastructure, software development, cybersecurity, and data. In many cases, companies are hoping to find candidates with some degree of work experience so there is less willingness to take an entry-level generalist and steer them towards a specialization. Beyond technical skills, businesses are also looking for technology professionals that can speak the language of the business, collaborating with other departments in order to drive technology-fueled business results. Employability skills such as communications and teamwork are no longer reserved for those workers on a management track, but now apply at every level. Given the shortage of skills on the market, there are no easy answers for how companies will fill these needs, but there are tremendous opportunities for technologists in every field. This is the exact reason why I say to do the CompTIA Security Plus, Linux Plus, Network Plus, as well as learning something around Python or a programming language. It gives you that a base overview of certifications to support that you know everything you need to know to get into cybersecurity. Number three is tech topics are front and center in US elections. As the IT industry is maturing, there are challenges posed as a result of tech's larger impact on the economy and deeper integration with society. In 2020, the US election cycle will put a spotlight on many of these issues. Debate in Washington and around the country has already begun with respect to responsibilities of certain players in the IT sector. Despite the overwhelming consumer and business benefits enabled by the IT industry, CompTIA data shows that 7 in 10 firms in the businesses of selling technology, most SMB-sized, fear that a negative perception of the tech industry is gaining momentum across the country and becoming more of an issue in general. In particular, increased awareness over privacy and how information is being collected and used could impact voters' decisions. Other issues might also join the discussion this election cycle, including cybersecurity, automation, artificial intelligence, net neutrality and technology's role in mitigating climate change and educating our children. 
When it comes to voting itself, election security also remains a key concern for voters. The use of voting technology coupled with the need to assure voters that their ballot will be counted underscores the need for safety, reliability and accessibility in digital infrastructure. Number four is hype meets reality with emerging technology. Over the past several years, there has been a lot of excitement around emerging technologies. At an operational level, this has been a positive trend as it has helped businesses build better practices for evaluating early stage topics and accelerating adoption. At a tactical level though, it has created quite a bit of chaos. Without the chance to wait and see which technologies prove their worth, companies have found themselves confronted with a bevy of options, a situation that exacerbates resource constraint and skill gaps. Heading into a new year, the hype around emerging technology remains high, especially among those firms selling and supporting technology. Many firms in the IT industry are expecting significant gains in emerging tech adoption or growth within their user base. Of course, part of the reason for significant gains is that the original base is fairly small. And this is where the reality sets in. CompTIA's end user data shows a very slow adoption curve across various new trends with only two trends beginning to reach critical mass from Internet of Things and Artificial Intelligence. Even amid all the hype, companies in the business of technology are starting to pull back on adopting new technology as part of their portfolio. This slight tap on the brakes suggests that classic situation where companies move too quickly into a new technology discipline or business model only to have a reality check in a year or two or three. Beyond IoT and AI, companies are excited about building solutions on top of 5G infrastructure. And other topics may have strong but specific use cases, like drones for example, function more as enabling technology like blockchain or still have years before making an impact like quantum computing. The market is settling down but it will remain a source of interest since new trends can still take off overnight. Number five is the Internet of Things continues to redefine IT architecture. As one of the two emerging technologies to be gaining significant traction, Internet of Things seems to be poised to join cloud computing and mobile devices as a permanent part of the modern technology landscape. Businesses are quickly discovering the value in digitizing their environment and their operations, collecting data that can help with future decision making. The trend is also showing positive returns for companies that sell and support technology. Half of these firms report either major or minor levels of IoT related sales in the last year, with others experimenting internally. Today, IoT as a managed service play is driving the most revenue in this category, but looking ahead to up the next two years, companies are predicting that analytics on data captured by IoT sensors then shared with customers holds the most financial promise. The first wave of IoT adoption is making good progress, but the next stage will require a keen understanding of digital biz ops. Rather than treating IoT installations as separate projects, businesses will have to recognize that they are dealing with an expanded architecture. This will dictate network structures, storage options, data policies, and security decisions. These changes will drive both channel firms and internal IT departments to invest in skills training in order to fully establish a successful data-based analytics practice. As with cloud computing and mobile devices, the groundwork has been laid for IoT to advance digital transformation. Now, something else worth mentioning here is that IoT is such a, a huge part of technology that's emerging at the moment. That's why it's in these top 10 trends that I'm going through. And what that means for you as someone who wants to get into cybersecurity is that there are a lot of new systems and architectures to protect or attack. For example, if you go to shodan.io, you'll be able to find a plethora of hackable devices basically that are internet facing. A lot of these devices are just basic IoT devices and some of them are a little bit creepy. For example, teddy bears that are connected to wireless networks or even IoT cameras, fridges, washing machines, 
toasters sometimes. There's just so many IoT devices out there. And I know these are like playful examples, right? But there are other ones, like ones in hospitals, for example, that maybe they shouldn't be an IoT device, but they are. And maybe they've been included in the hospital's uh, architecture design for their network, and they, they need to have this device connected. A lot of the time, they're using old technology, and being able to protect or, I guess, prove that these devices are indeed vulnerable is going to be a massive piece of the cybersecurity industry in the next few years. Next up on the list, number six, is Artificial Intelligence Eats the World. When Mark Andreessen made his now famous statement about software in 2011, he may not have even realized the extent to which the world would be consumed over the next decade. Cloud computing lowered both the barrier for developing software and the barrier for distribution, and mobile devices extended the reach of software to previously unreached corners. The net effect was an exponential increase in software's ability to drive activity. This created a new challenge in conducting said activity and acting on the data being collected. Enter artificial intelligence. With a foundation of software-driven routines and the compute resources to broadly run advanced algorithms, AI can push software to the next level. However, there's a fine line between eating the world and global domination. The challenges of programming bias and unreasonable outputs means that AI requires a different form of oversight than earlier software models. This oversight is an example of the kind of responsible implementation that technology professionals and solution providers must now perform. In addition, functional AI is like any other software in that it requires solid inputs in the case of AI these inputs are often massive data sets rather than highly specific data points, but there is still a need to ensure quality. For the, all the disruptive power that AI holds for businesses, operations and job roles, it opens new opportunities for those with the expertise to manage its appetite. So this brings me to one of the most asked questions on my YouTube channel, which is, is AI going to take over the job? And just like I say here, no it won't, it's just going to change things a little bit, which means that the roles will change, the job itself will change, some things will get easier with AI, some things will be completely replaced. It's not something that's gonna take away everyone's job at the end of the day, it's not as crazy as everyone seems to think, at least not yet. So there's still a chance for all of us, so just stay positive. Number seven is demand for integration leads to demand for automation. According to CompTIA's tech buying trends among small and medium-sized businesses, the top technology area where SMBs need the most work is integrating various platforms, applications, and data. Large businesses are focused on integration as well, but they have more internal resources that they can lean on. Even so, third parties are a popular option for integration activities especially where deep knowledge is needed for a particular platform or application. Whether integration is outsourced or being done in-house, the next step for many businesses will be automation. Automation has always been one goal of enterprise technology, but today's capabilities open new doors. Just by using cloud systems, companies can take advantage of tools from their cloud provider. Internet of Things implementations expand the ability to gather inputs from a variety of sources and artificial intelligence can help drive actions based on those inputs. From there, the vast array of other emerging technologies can allow companies to imagine and build complex automation. The goal of this automation, as with all technological advances, is to reduce the amount of routine work and to create breathing room for innovation. There will certainly be job roles that are disrupted in the process, but throughout the decade, businesses have shown a preference for keeping and repurposing skilled workers in an environment of skill shortage. Future automation will be highly complex, and the nature of AI will necessitate some amount of monitoring, so the endeavor will not be cheap. As with all strategic IT, businesses will need to see clear ROI calculations and long-term improvement plans before venturing deeper into automation. So just like with AI, uh, automation is sort of how AI works, or it's, it's sort of the other way around as well. 
So I usually put the two together and say AI and automation, they're not going to replace jobs straight away. The AI that's implemented is usually an automation task to make everyone's job easier. Number eight on the list is cybersecurity becomes more operational. The theme of cybersecurity over the past decade was a shift from a purely defensive mindset to a proactive approach that combined technology, process and education. Moving forward, the shift will be from cybersecurity as a component of IT to cybersecurity as a critical business function. When treated as part of IT, a proactive approach to cybersecurity may still struggle to get the proper budget allocation or properly demonstrate value to the business. As a result, organizations are beginning to treat cybersecurity as a dedicated function. At large enterprises, this usually takes the form of a CISO managing a team of resources, and the division is more clear. For everyone else, establishing a cybersecurity center of operations is much less formal and involves a blend of internal and external resources. The process starts with defining risk tolerance, a step that most companies are not familiar with, with after simply placing all corporate content behind a secure perimeter. The next step is to fill the skill gap that exists, which has become a difficult task with so many different areas under the umbrella of security. Finally, there must be metrics to measure the return on a more significant investment. Separating cybersecurity from IT and taking these steps evaluates the function to that of a critical business operation, on par with legal or accounting. For third parties providing security services and technical employees with security responsibilities, the transition will not take place overnight, but there will be notable progress throughout the year. So like I said, this isn't something that's gonna you know, happen this year. It's probably something that's going to happen over the next five to 10 years, maybe longer, because IT and cybersecurity are so tightly knitted together that it's gonna be a tricky task to sort of separate the two and say, okay, this is security and this is IT. Just like the developing world has been working against being part of an IT team as well, where now they finally have a thing where there's, you know, there's IT developers and then there's your IT staff. And it, it's, they're two separate things, just like cybersecurity and IT is. Um, they co-intermingle with each other, of course, but they are two very separate things, which is the, the point I'm trying to get across here with this trend topic. Number nine is deep fakes and 5G exacerbate the data management challenge. Deep fake applications are genuinely terrifying. We are talking about video and voice forgery software that convincingly makes people appear to be doing and saying things that they are not. This has the potential to wreak havoc on society, personal lives, politics, careers and beyond. And while such trickery might seem like a fun distraction or latest internet game, using these apps also means handing over reams of personal information to strangers. Scary, right? As long as deepfake applications exist, and they will continue to exist and proliferate, the need for sophisticated data management will skyrocket in upcoming years. And data volume already completely exponential is only going to mushroom with the more expansive rollout of 5G networks next year and beyond. This high-speed network is going to capture data at lightning fast pace from any type of device or inanimate object. In the next year, these two trends are just the primary examples of ongoing issues with data management. The need to properly identify that data with its true source, for example, a deep fake verification, and to secure the mountains of information speeding along these networks is going to be paramount for both major broadband providers and their downstream partners in the channel, as well as individual IT departments and possibly the government. Number 10, the last topic on this trend list is tech industry regulation stirs fears. There's a quote here, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Dickens could very well be speaking about the state of today's technology industry. The stock market has been flying high for the most part until COVID, of course, and the top five corporations in terms of global market capitalization sport names like 
Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google and Facebook. Emerging technologies offer exciting promise and yet it is also a time of uncertainty. Issues related to privacy violations, data protection, election interference and others have thrust the industry and many of its leading corporations into the media spotlight and the government's watchdog lens. For many who work in technology, the potential for increased government regulation, which some states are already pursuing, is an obvious concern. Most IT firms are operating on slim margins with limited cash flow. They fear too much regulation could restrain growth, while deregulation, they argue, could spur it. In fact, based on CompTIA's eighth state of the channel research, government regulation of the tech industry tops the worry list for the coming year. While a potential downturn to current economic conditions also sparks anxiety. That's a significant shift from last year when the main concerns for future success focused on new types of competitors in the market and skills gap for emerging technologies. Those are still valid business concerns, but it's clear that on a macro level, people are waking up to the fact that the Wild West days are over and the tech industry matures and grows more complex. Success and advancement come with a price. Balancing demands for more accountability while continuing to innovate. The question ahead is how the tech industry takes ownership of these issues and works with governments to build the proper set of guidelines. So what do you guys think of the uh, top 10 trends for 2020? Uh, as the years go on and this video gets viewed more, I think the, uh, the trends will definitely change. But at the moment, these are my predictions for the rest of this year. Okay, so now on to the next part and the last section of this part one video. We're going to learn how to make a website, which is some basic coding, right? Now, what you will need to do for this is to have an account on codeacademy.com. And what I need for you to do is to basically sign up an account, get started on the first section of that website. Now, all you need to do here is to build a basic website. So once you've signed up, it allows you to go through uh, this anatomy of a HTML element and it explains everything basically how to make a website. Uh, all you need to do in here is to basically make a website. I want you to name it the basics of cyber security level one. And uh, yeah, I want you to basically take a screenshot of the website that you've created in here and send it to the level one chat group in the library section of my Discord server. Uh, once you've done that, I'll then know that you've um, completed that piece of the, uh, the task and uh, that you basically know how to make a website. Anyway, yeah, that's, uh, that's all we have for today's part one exploring IT. Uh, if you guys did enjoy this video, please do give me a thumbs up, subscribe to be on the next video. If you want to know what's coming in the next few videos, have a look at the introduction uh, video of this course that I'm doing for you. And uh, yeah, I'd love to see some uh, discussion about this in my Discord server. There's a link in the description for that if you're wondering where to find the Discord server. And uh, yeah, congratulations on getting through part one of the basics of cybersecurity. I'll see you on the next video, guys. Catch you later.